I've been working with complex big data in the financial services industry for almost seven years now, which was more than enough time for me to develop and enhance my very own systematic 10-step approach to effective data visualizations. In today's video, I'd like to share this systematic approach with you, broken down into a comprehensive step-by-step -step guide to help you visualize your data a lot more effectively. Before I jump into it, for those of you who are new here, my name is Mo Chen and I've been working as a data and analytics manager for years now. And with this little introduction out of the way, here's step one. Know your audience and purpose. Make sure you start by focusing on who will view and use your data visualization and what decisions or insights they need. Tailor your approach to their level of expertise and the context in which they will use the information. This will ensure that your visualizations are relevant and actionable. Guiding questions you should be asking yourself would be, why am I making this visualization? Is it to better understand my data? For example, for exploratory data analysis purposes. Is it to call out large month-on-month -month swings in the data? For whom am I making this visual for? Analysts, business stakeholders, senior management? Am I trying to communicate a specific finding or would I like my viewers to draw their own insights? Step two, select the right chart type. This one seems like a no-brainer, but what's blatantly obvious is sometimes what is probably the easiest to miss or do wrong. So, use line charts for trends over time, bar charts for comparing categories and quantities, scatter plots for relationships between variables and tree maps, or bubble charts for proportions and multi-variable comparisons. I'm a big fan of line and bar charts due to their simplicity, so I only really use other types of charts if I'm trying to visualize something super complex. Step 3. Simplify. I have this golden rule that if my audience cannot understand my visual in less than 15 seconds, maximum 30 seconds at best, then my visual is not a good one. The simpler your visual, the quicker and easier your audience will digest, interpret and action your visual. Remember this, how good your visualizations are depends solely on how quickly and easily they achieve the desired business outcome. Say, enable your stakeholders to take the right action quickly. The effectiveness of your visualization does not come from how pretty or beautiful you think it looks. It comes from how much business value it can generate. Some very simple things you can do would be to remove unnecessary elements, what I call chart junk elements like excessive grid lines, redundant legends, or overly decorative backgrounds. I think we can all agree that transforming raw data into actionable dashboards easily and quickly can unlock crucial business insights, which is why I want to show you Resplendent Data, a tool that you can use to connect and visualize data insights from any source in real time. Let me show you how it works. You have your integrations. Think of all the data in the apps and databases that you're already using, just sitting there waiting to be visualized. Datasets allow you to combine and modify that data as you wish, and widgets turn raw data from any dataset into instantly actionable visuals, all within one platform. Now, let me demonstrate how easily and quickly you can build actionable widgets in resplendent data. Once you're logged in, you just click on New Dashboard, add your widget by selecting your chart type and the data you'd like to show, customize the visual to your exact liking, and that's it. You can build just a single widget or entire dashboards for internal or even external use. If you and your team want to do business intelligence right, as in the right way and right now, then I highly recommend you check out Resplendent Data using my link in the description below. If you sign up now, you'll get two months of free access, so you get to try all the great things I just talked about at zero cost. And a huge shout out to Resplendent Data for partnering with me to make this video happen. And let's move on to step four, use colors wisely. I would start by limiting your color palette to only the absolute bare minimum to avoid distraction. Then use color to emphasize key points or categories and make sure to keep the consistency when it comes to color coding. 
One big mistake I see people, at least in the YouTuber, influencer, content creator space make with visualization is that they completely ignore readability. Dark backgrounds might look cool, but if you ask anyone who's worked in corporate environments, you'll quickly realize that using a high contrast scheme for readability, a scheme like black text on a white background, is what people like because it's easy to see and easy to read. If I presented a dashboard to my bosses with a pitch black background that though looks really cool, but is pretty much impossible to read easily, I am pretty sure that would not go down well. Step five, write clear labels and provide context. The labels bit, like using clear direct labels for axes, data points, and titles might be a no brainer, but I see lots of people who do not provide context around their visuals. Sometimes a sentence or two might be all your audience need to really understand what's going on in your data visualization as you provide the necessary context. A simple thing I like to do is to provide a piece of information in the form of a compelling headline. Step six, maximize the data to ink ratio. This is actually a key principle in Edward Tufte's data visualization work. Make every mark on your visual convey information. Every color, every line, every bar, every annotation, every title, everything on your visual must add valuable information to your audience. If this is not the case, you need to work on your visual. Step seven, highlight what truly matters. Use design elements like color, size, and position to draw attention to the most important data point you have. Build a visual hierarchy to make key insights stand out and less critical information stay where they should be in the background. A huge mistake I see many professionals in the workplace make is that they try and cram as much information into one visual, which is really counterproductive in the sense that the audience gets completely lost in the vast amount of information. Ideally, you want to have one key data point, one key insight, one key action per visual for your viewers to focus on. The method of let me just include this as well is not a good one, trust me. Step eight make your visualizations interactive if possible. I know there are many times when your visual or dashboard will just go into a static PowerPoint pack to be presented to senior leadership, but if you do have the chance to present in person or through screen sharing, please use interactive elements such as tooltips, filters, or drill downs. We have all these amazing BI tools out there like Tableau or Power BI that are capable of building such engaging and interactive visuals. It'd be a shame not to use their advanced BI tooling features to engage your audience even more. Step nine, ensure accessibility for all users. This one is something I have to remind myself very often as I don't have any visual impairments, but I know some people do and I want to make sure that I make it as easy as possible for everyone to easily understand my visualizations. Don't forget to use accessible color palettes and don't make the font size too small as just because you can read it doesn't mean that everyone else can do the same. And last but not least, step 10, always ask for feedback. As I mentioned before, your visualization is only as good as the insights your audience can gain from it. The easiest way you can improve your visuals is simply to ask for feedback on what's working and what's not. Make sure you keep on iterating based on the feedback you get, good or bad. By closing these feedback loops, you are guaranteed to improve your visuals over time as you're aligning the technical build with the business ask. And that's it from me for today. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you want to see more content like this, feel free to check out these videos right here and all of the resources on my website at mochan.info. Thanks so much for taking just a little time out of your day to watch this and I shall see you in the next one.